Facebook page, I mean the YouTube page. Okay, so good evening, everybody. Um, so my name is Aka Bridge Ford, and I am so excited right now to be with my cousin Thaddeus Price. Introduce yourself. I'm Thaddeus Price. I'm her cousin. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I am a co-founder and co-organizer of Baltimore Ceasefire 365 and a humanitarian and change agent and all of that stuff. Uh, Price, tell the people about yourself. Well, I am an educator, very um, proud educator. I've been in the field of education professionally for um, over 20 years now. Uh, I've taught K through 12 um, education. Also, I've taught... Um, Community College, and I currently actually serve as um, an educational administrator at the great Morgan State University, where I uh, work with um, academic improvement and making sure that our students graduate and matriculate on time. Nice. nice. Also, I'm a musician. You see, you see the little music. You there? are yeah. a musician. Listen, <laughs> I think I'll just be coming up with reasons to be like, how can I get him to bring his voice and a whole choir to a celebration. I just be thinking of reasons. Okay, so, um, uh, so I'm just gonna introduce why we're having this conversation. So one day last week, my cousin Price called me on Facebook video chat, which I think is the first time that has ever happened, right? I think it is also, yes. Right, mm -hmm. and um, I don't, oh, because my grandma turned 90 years old last week. And so he originally was calling me to check in about some logistics about that. Mm -hmm. And just because the world is doing everything the world is doing right now, and we are black people, of course, we started having conversations about everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. And he started saying some things to me that totally mm -hmm. just made my head pop off and think about racial injustice and the myth of white supremacy in just brand new ways. Mm -hmm. um, and so the conversation went in such a way that I got, I was like, oh no, we got to have this conversation live yeah. um, and, you know, take people's comments and questions and things like that. So what we're going to do is um, have the conversation. I'm going to start out asking Price about the very first thing he said to me that made my head pop off about the Santa Claus, how white people believe in Santa Claus. We're going to start there mm -hmm. and then we'll just go on with the conversation. Um, and then we will um, take questions and comments that people have. If you are on Facebook or in the Zoom, feel free to be typing comments and, you know, discussing things with each other as well. So, Price, the first thing you said, can you, so talk to us about what you think about white people and how they believe in Santa Claus, please. Well, okay, first, let me just, let me prerequisite what I'm about to say with this right here. These are my sincere thoughts and opinions. I don't want, you know, since I, since I, I am a, a, an academician. I don't want everyone to think that I've done a ton of scholarly research on this subject. Okay. This is what I have lived my 45 years in my beautiful black skin in Baltimore. Okay. All right. So let me just make that clear. And so um, as we're going through, you know, everything that, that we are dealing with, um, you know, it just, it just, I had to pop on just, to, I was just sharing with my cousin and sharing with some friends. I said, I said this and I said it, I was really serious. I said that this nation is going to need a ton of mental health professionals to prepare to deal with the massive trauma that many of um, our white brothers and sisters have when they discover and realize and come to the knowledge that Santa Claus is not real. And um, this is you real quick. When you first said that to me, I was confused because I was like, grown ups think Santa Claus is real. And then like as you kept talking, it really I just okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. And and it it it, it um it hit me because um uh, for, okay, I guess we just gonna just get into the conversation. Um for, as an educator for, for, for many, many, many years, 
um, I know that we've always, many of us, especially, um, especially African Americans, especially, especially proud black men like me, um, we've always uh, been a little uh, concerned about the lack of um, black history being taught in our school system, especially in our public school system and our private school systems, but just being taught um, on a broader spectrum and really getting a, a proper taste, a proper understanding of the role, the place, and the contributions of, of people of color uh, beyond a few little stories we hear in the month of February, shortest month of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, so beyond that. And, uh, you know, and I was always, but you know, the older I got, I've, I've become, and the, and the more I have worked in education, and the more I've just studied life and been living, I realized that it's not just that Black history isn't taught in schools, neither is white history. Come on with the, it. The bottom line is that uh, we're, not, we're not really being taught proper history in That's school. Right. And some of us are fortunate and blessed, you know, we're blessed. Like Erica's dad is a historian. We, 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 we're blessed. We have a lot of people, educators and people in our families, but many people don't have that. Right. And so, um, you know, many people have not learned proper history, especially U.S. history. That's as, right. Especially American history. So that, um, we, as, as I was concerned for so long that Black history wasn't properly being taught, it really has occurred to me that the, the real deal is that white history, the history of the European uh, in this country has not really properly been taught right. um, truthfully That's right. and accurately. And so consequently, um, you, know, I, and, you know, I think what really sparked it and I think what really kind of uh, hit me with this big time was the original comments that were made by Drew Brees last week. And um, I saw that come on the news in the middle of the night and I, and I looked and I just shook my head. And I thought about Drew Brees and I thought about many other um, people like him, particularly our white brothers and sisters that have their this narrative of the nation. And I realized that they're sincere. They are absolutely sincere. The problem is they are sincerely wrong. <laughs> and, and, and that's just the reality of it. Like they have really for generations been taught a myth. Yes. And immediately, it, I just immediately went to Santa Claus. I said, it's just like, I mean, they don't know. They don't Santa know. Claus, Santa Claus ain't real. Right. Like, they really have this beautiful, rosy, lovely picture of these poor immigrant settlers that just wanted a better life and freedom yes. and religion and all. They just wanted all this. Good, and they just came here innocently and, you know, had a happy Thanksgiving meal with some corn and a turkey <laughs> and just started this whole brave new world. And the truth of the matter is that many Americans have not been told and taught and they don't understand truth. And the problem is that when you want to speak truth, people take truth as then you are anti-America. That is what's really amazing about it. Mm -hmm. So so, so I was looking at the, um, I really try my best not to pay attention to anything Donald Trump says because it's Donald Trump. Right, right. And I didn't pay attention to him before. And so I'm kind of like, that's my that's my habit, but I I saw something about the Confederate symbolism coming down all over the nation, statues and things like that, and that you know there were these conversations about whether or not to rename na um military bases that are named after Confederate right soldiers right. and generals and whoever they are, yeah, and. This man really said that, I mean, it, it was, a, okay, here, here's, the, here's the problem, right? Because mm -hmm. it was the two things that he said that he really thinks go together and many people really believe it. So he said that the reason he was going, he was refusing to change the, the names is because those Confederate warriors mm -hmm. and the Confederacy itself 
-hmm. was a part of America's heritage mm -hmm. that he refused to have erased and looked down upon. And it was like this beautiful, right? And so this idea that the Confederate flag, the Confederate soldiers, the whole Confederate armies and everything, like the idea that they were heroes, that the people who were trying so hard to hold on to chattel slavery mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that their way of life would not change drastically. Right, right. They are heroes, and that's a part of, of American heritage that you don't want to change. And instead of being labeled monsters, mm -hmm. they're labeled heroes. And then mm -hmm. out of the other side of his neck, mm -hmm. when he questioned about why in the world would he start his rally again, you know, mm -hmm. on Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. in, in Tulsa. In Tulsa, mm -hmm. of all places. Right. Mm -hmm. He then said, as the party of Lincoln, Republicans are proud of the history of Juneteenth. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> like the, the, in, the mental instability and insanity that you think those two things go together, that you can yeah. uphold Confederate mm -hmm. everything as a precious part of America's heritage and yeah. you think, and, and then you can even say out of your mouth that you're on a Juneteenth. Right. It's just, it's completely amazing. It's, it's just, well, well, it's well, phenomenal. Check this out. Here's, the, here, here's something even, even sadder. <clears throat> We're talking. You're you're talking about one um, one ill person. the The problem is there are millions just like them. Millions, right? But but that, but what else could they think if that's all they've ever been taught? That's all they have been taught, right? And so up until however old we were, we really believed in the little poems yeah. that we get taught about Christopher Columbus sailing that's the right. ocean blue, and even when we think about loitering to this day being illegal not understanding that it was one of the very first laws put on the books when slavery was ended because black people had nowhere to go or be that's right and so they made it illegal to be just hanging around outside in other words not you're, you're able to prove who you were when we didn't have first certificate. no 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 what is what they're saying is that your existence is illegal you exist because in other words you don't have the right to mm. even exist is what was being said you exist you don't, you don't have the right and you certainly forget coexistence you don't right. even have the right to exist here right. because we stole this land for us that's right we stole this like we meaning our we meaning our, our, our and I their white forefathers up, but the white the white forefathers and right. not all, but the vast majority. Absolutely. Okay? Um, stole this land um, specifically for us. Um, <clears throat> you know, that's you know, colonization is what it is. It and, is. And, and and you don't have the right to exist that's without right. my permission because you, you and which or then go back into slavery, right? And so right. then prison was the new form of slavery. Absolutely. And so all of the laws started figuring out how can we criminalize just black existence? Yeah. Well, well it's, it's, it's wonderful because the prison is great because then again, I get free labor. That's Even, right. I mean, come on, you can, you can make, make us, let me some free license plates. That's right. Even till right now. Till right the right land. Right oh. now. Right now, prisoners. We need some, we need some PPE for the, for the hospital workers. We need some hand sanitizer. Woo! You, so that, you're right. You're hurting some feelings. I can feel that's, that hurt me in my chest. You know, and 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 let's and, and let's and guess what? And you're right. We do need these things. But why aren't why aren't the rich companies that that's getting richer off the prison, off the free prison labor? Because that's a right, business. right. That's a whole. And even thing. if they do get paid, it's like two dollars a week or something crazy. Right. It's like no. ridiculous. It's, it's ridiculous. And, and, and it's non-existent. Yeah, and, and then again, which takes me into um, my big um, push and premise a a as I was sharing um, over the last couple of weeks with many of my white brothers and sisters that, <clears throat> Ooh, yeah. This is, my fa this is one of my favorite parts. Let me just get close. <laughs> <laughs> as, as I was really explaining 
to my to my white brothers and sisters that yes, um, absolutely. Uh, not only do we uh, we appreciate the, your support, um, I actually expect you to lead this charge. I'm gonna tell you why I expect white folks to lead this charge because you created it. Like this is your mess. Your, mm. This is your mess that you should be doing every. And when I say you, I know that you. Uh, people say, "Well, I wasn't a lot." Well, guess what? Neither was I. But I'm the. I am the beneficiary and recipient of slavery, and you're the <laughs> beneficiary and recipient of what my ancestors did for you. You know what I'm saying? But that's a whole nother story. But with that being said, it's all the same story though, and that's a big part of the problem, right? When they can't, when people can say, "Well, that wasn't me. That was my ancestors, or right. my ancestors didn't own slave." But your whole entire, all of your generations yes. benefit yes. from it. Even if you are and poor and white, it's you're still benefiting from not being poor and black. Absolutely, absolutely, and which to and to that point which is why I've been explaining to people that I need for my white brothers and sisters to understand what Black Lives Matter means, but I don't need my white brothers and sisters saying Black Lives Matter. I don't. What do, what, what, how come? What I need my white brothers and sisters to say is that I, I, if you are white in America, if you're white anywhere in this world, Thanks. I want you to start making it your mantra, your justice cry, teach everybody you know from your great grandparents to your children that ain't even born yet. But teach everyone what you should be saying is black lives are equal to our lives. Black lives are equal to our lives. You don't need to be saying black lives matter because black lives have always mattered as Especially to white folk. Come on. This is the part that made my head pop off. I'm not even going to lie. This is the part that I just was like, what you mean our lives have always mattered? And then you went on to explain. Black lives have mattered so much to white people, especially in this country. You fought a whole war over how much we meant and mattered to you. That's right. The whole purpose of the Civil War was because Black lives matter. That's the right. The word matter simply connotes relevance or, a, or significance. Right. But guess what? Your animal lives matter. Your mental matters. Their lawns matter. matter. Lawns matter. Your bank account matter. You see somebody in a mink coat, you ready to throw paint on them because that matters to you so much. You want to put People in jail for dog fights because the dog matters. So I don't need y'all to say we matter. We always yes. matter. If we didn't matter, you wouldn't have had the slave master chasing us down every time Harriet was leading us up out of here. Come on. We mm. matter so much that you would spend weeks and money and pay bounty hunters to run back after us. So we've always mattered to you. Don't tell me if you're white that Black Lives Matter. I don't really mean too much to me coming from your lips. And I, that's no disrespect. It's just, it's just fact. It's just fact. Because I know that. I, I, wait a minute, wait a minute. We know we matter today. Think about it. Without us, y'all wouldn't have that prison population making all that stuff for free for y'all. Keeping y'all rich. So I know we matter. I know we matter. I know that brown people matter. If we don't have brown people, if we don't have our brown brothers and sisters, who who gonna be picking all that fruits and vegetables and taking care? Listen, y'all talk about farmers are so poor. You guys own millions of acres of land. Y'all not the ones out there working it. How you got the brown people doing the brown people. So 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 you How can't really say it? matter if you're a white person. It's just not enough. I'm sorry. Because your slave matter, your car matter, your property matter. Where pro- property always matters. Property has always mattered. As I've been having, and when you, when you were saying this and you started talking about what, if you are a white ally, what you need to be talking about is equity. Equity. You need to be talking about equity. equity. Not just equity. that black lives matter, mm-hmm. but you mm-hmm. need to be talking about equity. And as I've been having these conversations with my friends, mm-hmm. um, Ellen G said, right, it's that they had to say and acknowledge out loud. They had to con- even consider Right. The black lives are as valuable as white yeah. lives are. Absolutely. Because it's Absolutely. not that, that we had our lives haven't mattered. It's right. that white people have always gotten to decide how black lives matter. 
exactly what is the role of this what is the role of this right what right. is the relevance of it you know you what I'm get to decide when a black life matters and when it's disposable so exactly. you've gotten to decide how it matters what you've never what what the myth of white supremacy has never even considered mm -hmm. is the value of a black life Absolutely. that a Absolutely. black life is equal to theirs is just as valuable as a white life because that will shake you at your roots and mm -hmm. start to make you have to undo all of your myths about who your heroes are in Absolutely. history Absolutely. You have to stop calling settlers settlers and call them rapists and criminals right. and That's murderers right. and That's robbers right. and thieves. That's like, right. <laughs> you know, you know and, and, and we have to get to the point mm. where, you know, and, until we decide to be honest as a yes. nation. Yes. Until America decides to be honest and deal with its original sin. This right. nation as the United States, it was founded upon the original premise of white supremacy and racism. That's right. And we cannot pretend, we cannot, we cannot go around, and that's the problem. We have been going over hundreds of years and too many, not all now, not all, but too many of our white brothers and sisters, they don't seem to, and again, that's because they really don't know it's a myth. Okay, so here we go. Let's let the trouble start. Now, fortunately, you know, I, I was properly educated. I come from a strong family. We were taught right from, we were also taught in history and whatnot. And then also, I, I was blessed to go to, you know, one of the greatest HBCUs in the world, the Morgan State University, absolutely. And so we, we understood history in its proper context. I will never forget. Right. I will never forget my first year as an educator in the public school system, in a predominantly white public school system, that even if it had a black face at the helm, it was still a white public oh, school. The original. Yeah, right. and I will never forget that I had to, um, I had to cover, you know, if a teacher is out, sometimes you cover other classes and whatnot, and I had to go and cover a social studies class. And they just, didn't know what they was doing when they did that. Well, I mean, you know, I was excited because everyone that knows me knows that my two love, my two passions are music and history. Those are my things. I love them. If, if, if I, anything I'm going to teach, I'm going to teach music, I'm going to teach history. Those are my things. That's I'm into. And so I was excited. And it was the week, <clears throat> it was the week of Columbus Day. And no, this, Jesus. The, the social studies class. And then mind you, I was in a school that at the time was culturally diverse, but it was certainly, it was certainly, um, a ma the majority of it was black. It was a majority black school, but it still had a nice population of mixture of, of, of you know, Caucasian, Asian, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But I, I was in, and as they were learning the lessons, you know, and of course I'm talking to the class or whatever, and I, I made the mistake of explaining to the class that, well, you know, Columbus didn't actually discover america <laughs> you know stuff that we'd always stuff that we stuff that we knew right <laughs> stuff that we knew and it wasn't we us mm -hmm. my, my, my chocolate brothers and said we knew that we know that and i watch this now again my naivety i'm thinking at the time that by now everybody knows that it's the late 90s. Right. By the time, right. Why is it still a myth? Why is the why is the Easter Bunny still running around loose out this bitch in the 90s? Yes. Yes. It's the late 90s. And I'm thinking everyone by now knows that. We know they know the religion. Mm. Trade route to India, et cetera, spices, all that kind of good stuff got lost, caught up in the current, yada, 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 ended up here like what? And so, et cetera, et cetera. And you know, I'm just well just telling the truth. Telling the truth. Apparently, a couple of the students, you know, didn't know, and they were they weren't mad. They, they were they were, and they were some of the students that didn't look like us, right? So they had apparently shared it with some of their other teachers, who were some of my vanilla co colleagues. Vanilla. Okay. <laughs> and so um, it then gets to the place where I'm a brand new first year teacher, right out of college, fresh out of Morgan, excited. And um, 
one of my vanilla administrators calls me this little round chocolate new teacher in her office and wanted to know what in the world I had said to those students. And I was just, oh yeah, we were talking about Columbus. And I was explaining. And she could not believe that I was in there telling students that Columbus didn't discover. Now, watch this. Here's the thing. At the time, I was thinking that she was just upset um, because, you know, I'm, I'm telling real history. Mm. I didn't realize till later. Mm. Homegirl didn't know herself. Woo! I ain't going to tell you how high ranking she is now in the school system. We ain't going to go there. We ain't gonna, we ain't gonna go and that's, that. that's a part that's really very hard, mm -hmm. right? That somebody who can call you in to their office to say, how dare you? How dare I? Wait a minute, it gets worse. She was so livid now. I mean, livid to the point of, and I'm not even, I'm, li I'm being very serious. She literally turned red for real. Like, I mean, li like, mm. like right here. <laughs> cheeks, cheeks were here. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I kid you not. I'm serious. <laughs> Literally. And I was in shock. Right? And um, <laughs> she wanted me to then write an apology because I guess some of the parents were now mm. calling because they couldn't understand. You know? Mm. And um, I'm like, what? Are y'all serious right now? So what did I do? I wrote, today, I taught the students the truth about American history that Columbus was like, blah, 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 blah. Thank you. And then I and suggested- And I'm sorry that they didn't know already. There's your apology. <laughs> and then I suggested some <laughs> books. I suggested some books that they should read. Let's start with Before the Mayflower. Let's go there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, so, and, and again, like I said, and this person was, and I'm gonna tell you, and I learned so much that day. And, I, and watch this. And now, Two of the other administrators were of the chocolate persuasion, and they just said they thought it was just hilarious. Because, in other words, they were they were they and they said to me, they said, "Welcome to education." I was That's like, "Crazy, what?" Like, so I mean, you learned that that was the norm. This person who called you into the office wasn't an exception within no. the education system. Absolutely, this was the norm that we are teaching children fairy yes. tales. Fairy tales. And how Sorry. dare you? How dare? But how dare. smirch the heritage of our you know fairy tales. You know what I did? I started kneeling on the flag. And, and you can't do that. that mm. see, this is the premise of what all of that is. And, and, and again, I'm, I'm, not, you know, I'm not speaking poor, but the truth of the matter, the fact is that same person is now one of the top people so you can now see the way of thinking and so that goes That's on. Right. And watch this. Here, check this out now. Let's think about this for a second. And if this is happening in Maryland, where honestly, you know, for all the things that we have right or wrong, we do by and large still have one of the best public school systems in the country. Right. Imagine how it is for some of them poor states. That's exactly right. Where they That's really exactly right. don't know too much. That's exactly right. And, and the I mean, fact that she's that that person was able to climb the ladder, right? With that mindset, that, mindset. that is what helped you get that's what helps you get ahead in the education system, miseducating children yeah, yeah. around the history of whiteness. But but in again, America. guess what though? That's what she learned. Right. That's what she learned. Right. So it does, So when you are indoctrinated with something, when you are thoroughly indoctrinated, when you are thir when you are part of, when you are one, if you, if you are yeah. a descendant of the Daughters of the Revolution, for example. Right. Okay, if you are and disrespecting my family. You, that's right. <laughs> how, they, how, and so, and so they, they cannot mm. comprehend. Mm. They really cannot comprehend that they are suffering from generations of being brainwashed. Right. They have experienced so many culturally acceptable lies that they don't know a lie. They don't know a lie it, when they it, hear it one. It is their truth. It is, yeah. Now watch this, watch this. Let me, let me explain to you like this. Okay, to, to some of my, 
to some of my white brothers and sisters, let me ask you this. Think about this rhetorically. Let, let's deal with some, some of my white brothers and sisters who don't understand why it is disgusting. You know, you know, like, like, like watch this. When you know better, you do better. Okay? That's right. When you know better, you do better. And truthfully, there were some things that were, I don't believe everything was done out of, now there were some things that were done deliberately. For example, example, I'm talking about these, the Confederate statues. Confederate statues went up you know, I, as a little kid, I'm thinking these statues have been here for hundreds of years. They had not. Those things went up, the majority of them went up at the beginning of the 1900s deliberately because we had so many racists in Congress, especially in the White House from Woodrow Wilson on down. And they were doing that deliberately to make a statement. Okay. Wow. To make, to make a, Absolutely. So, you know, they were deliberately trying to, you know, do, do these very things. So what happens now is um, what, we, what we have is trying to explain to people so I want you to, for my white brother, to think about this for a second. Watch this. Like it or not. And let's be clear. All Germans weren't bad. However, Hitler is a part of their history. How about it? Hitler, it, like it or not, he's a part of their history. So if you're in Germany today, should we have statues of Hitler all over the place? Come on. Hmm? Should we have bases, military bases named after Hitler and statues why, of Hitler? Come on. Why don't we have, let's, let's, let's throw up swastikas everywhere all over Germany. Ooh, what? The way we it's got the Oh, the way it's if you drive into, one of the scariest places to drive through is Hagerstown, Maryland. Oh, absolutely. Because the God. minute you get to the front door of that joint, oh, it is Confederate flags. Everywhere, like. And what, what, I, what I need for my white brothers is, is to understand that that Confederate flag, okay, for me is a, and right. for my brothers and sisters is just like a swastika to the Jew. That is exactly right. I need right. for you to understand the significance of it. When you tell, oh, but it, it, even just watch this. Even just the slogan, the South shall rise again. You and understand? Don't it sound familiar to make America oh, yeah. great again? Oh, that's, exactly, that's exactly what it is. Because that's when America was great for racists. That's right. It was, that's when it was great. When you profited and got rich. Because, you know, because yes, because we mattered so much because we make y'all rich. We make yeah. you rich. We make yeah. you look good. Yeah. You know we made you look good, we made you rich, we, made, we teach you how to cook, teach you how to sing, teach you how to dance, we made you music, we made you culture, even built your White House. Woo! But you understand that we mm. are equal, mm. okay? And that is the problem. Mm. The problem, there needs to be cries of equity. Yeah. It cannot be for my white brothers is that we matter. We've always mattered because we were your property. They need to go deeper than we matter. Much deeper. Much right. deeper. Right, they much, need to go much, deeper. Much and deeper. so you you can have your Black Lives Matter signs and also have mm -hmm. your Black Black Lives Are Equal signs. Black that's lives exactly. are as valuable as that's, mine. That's Put that right. in your yard. That's Put right. that in that's, your yard. Black lives are as valuable as the lives in my house. That's right. In that's your right. front yard. That's right. <laughs> Just like you drive through parts of Essex and parts of you see Trump signs. I want my white brothers and sisters to put signs all over your yards that say Black Lives are equal to our yeah. lives. Yeah. Then, what those, when you say, yeah. what, what can we do? And watch this, just starting to reteach, to reshape. And yeah, guess what? It took generations of false indoctrination. So no, it's not gonna happen overnight. That's right. It's not gonna happen overnight. But this is where you start. We start planting those seeds right now. Yeah. Stop putting yeah. those seeds in your children. And go back and re-educate your, some of your older family who, who don't get it. Yeah. You know, because what, they don't know. They were lied to. And something that occurs to me right now that I didn't even think about when we were having mm -hmm. this conversation before is because history is taught through white mythology. Right. Mm -hmm. Then it means that you automatically have to demonize black history. Right, exactly. Right. It means that you have <laughs> just saying the word Black Panthers, for, for right. example. Right. 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 Black people even are like, oh, oh, it was the... Oh, oh, 
They get scared yeah. just saying it, right? And when my dad explained to me one day, he said, you know, people love to hail Martin Luther King today and talk about mm -hmm. how wonderful he was. But mm -hmm. in the time that he was alive, people yeah. were afraid to follow him. Absolutely. Because they said that crazy N-word is going to yes. get himself killed. Yes. Because he yes. was radical. The fact that he was talking about equality and value of Black lives, yeah. Yeah. it was dangerous to be saying that stuff out loud. Yeah. And yeah. many people, Black people, were afraid to say those kind of things as Absolutely. well out loud and to, and to walk with him. And so people like to demonize the Panthers and then forget that actually Martin Luther King Jr. was uh, was very much a dangerous figure at that oh, time, yeah. but also Absolutely. then to misrepresent and mischaracterize what the Black Panther Party was all about. Right. Um, and even right. when we when we um, when we think about, I have his face in my head, and I can't. Why you? I cannot pull his name to the front of my brain, who they broke into his house and killed him in the night in his uh, sleep. Matt, Matt, uh, Matt, um, um, a, a panther that they killed in his, in his, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, his, uh, 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 his uh, pregnant uh, uh, girlfriend was in there and they, yeah. they kicked the door in and just, why can I not remember? Now we talking about during the 60s or we talking about last week? Help me now, which one are we talking about? Well, see, that's the problem right there, right? That's the problem, that's the problem right there. Mm -hmm. And the and I'm so mad that I did his name. This is this is why my brain is fried and I'm so tired mm -hmm. right now because this is a man I wear on my t-shirts when I'm going to speak at white places because I want to be able to call his name all the time. And um, his name is no, 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 no. Younger, no. young, oh, wait, wait, wait. young, and he That's was bringing together all of the. So my point is the reason he was so dangerous. Yes. It's because it wasn't just that he was helping black people understand that they mattered. He was right. helping white people understand and poor working mm -hmm. class people understand how they were being used by richer white people yes. to pit them against black people. Yes, absolutely. And so then now all of a sudden, white poor people and working class white people Fred Hampton! Thank you very much. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Thank you, Alyssa. I yes. don't know why my brain got stuck, and I'm so sorry, Fred Hampton ancestor. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Right. So Fred Hampton, the reason he was a genius and on America's most wanted list now. Yeah. He had done yeah. nothing violent. He had done nothing horrendous to be on that list. Mm -hmm. But what he was able to do was articulate to working class white people and poor white people. Mm -hmm. how they were being pitted against black people and still mm -hmm. being and still staying poor right mm -hmm. because poor white people to this day will say well i'm poor i don't have privilege and but they still get to see themselves as better than black people absolutely right absolutely. and so he was able to articulate the they can lies, yeah. right the mythology tells you yeah. that you are better than black people mm -hmm. while you still get to stay poor, at least you're not black. So if exactly. we all came together and fought for equity and justice for right. all, right. then we all could rise. And for right. that, he was right. on the top, he was on America's Most Wanted, and, yes. and they raided his house in the night while he was asleep with his pregnant woman in the bed beside him, and they slaughtered everybody in the house yeah yeah so you have to demonize black heroism oh yeah right if yeah. you are going to lie if you're going to turn your monsters into heroes then mm -hmm. you have to turn black heroes into monsters absolutely absolutely but again and then we like, all get taught it right of course then we but, all get taught that but we, i mean f fables works That's we like right. fables That's we like right. fables you know, and it, 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 I mean, it is ingrained. Like, there are so many millions of our brothers and sisters that really don't, they just, they just really can't even comprehend. They can't, they, forget acceptance. It's yeah. so far-fetched. It's far-fetched to imagine that this country is not every lie that they were taught that it is. Watch this. All right, I'm from Baltimore. 
I love Baltimore. Matter of fact, I wanted to go out and have some crabs tonight. But anyway, whole nother story. All right. But check this out. One of my, um, and I'm still, honestly, I'll be honest. We're, all, we're constantly growing, constantly evolving. But one of my, I don't know if it's a regret. I don't know if it's a mistake. I'm not sure yet. Um, but one thing that I'm kind of conflated about is I, I, my choir used to do a beautiful rendition of the national anthem. Beautiful mm. acapella rendition. Man, you can still hear it. You can still hear it. it it's, it's oh, beautiful. Christ. Go on. It, it's, it, you know what I'm saying? It, it, beautiful rendition. Oh, okay. Christ. Of the national anthem. We would wear that thing out. Acapella. You know what I'm saying? And wear that thing out. And Open I know y'all did because everything y'all you know touched went through the roof. And, uh, but I'm going to tell you something. My feelings about that song now are right. so horrid. Yeah. Um, when you really consider it, you know, um, when you really think about it. Because again, growing up, one thing, now growing up in Baltimore, you know, Baltimore, that's how pride, that good old Francis got that's key. That's exactly right. You, that you, go on, you go on field trips. That Fort, Fort McHenry's the best. You go that's on field trips. Anthony, that flag, come on now. That's what yeah. we do. That's yeah. what we do. But when you understand what a monster Francis Scott Key yeah. was, Francis Scott Key, he wasn't just a lawyer and a prosecutor. He was such a hate-mongering um, racist that one of his cases, he worked hard to hang a white man because a white man had the audacity to have some literature in his possession mm. that posed the question, uh, is it right to treat human beings as property? Wow. Francis Scott Key, the great author. Wow. Great hero, right? Key Bridge, Port McHenry, all that good wow. stuff. Was such a racist, he wanted to make sure he killed white folk who Ooh. would try to do anything to promote equity. Because that made that person a traitor. Exactly. And exactly. you know what's real, what's real wild about that? So mm -hmm. I'm one of my, this woman who I love and admire, she's a poet and just a phenomenal brain and businesswoman. Mm -hmm. Her name is Shelly Washington. Okay. She made a post today about the about the she she didn't know that there were uh, military bases named after Confederate war people, <laughs> and so she was like, "Oh my goodness, this is a real thing." She said, "America has to be like the only place in the world where an army rises up against the government and loses." And then is still honored as heroes yeah. in American history. That's right. Right? So, right. so, so a white man who poses the question, mm -hmm. is it right that black lives are not equal and mm -hmm. not as valuable and that we consider them property? Is it right? Posing the question makes you a hero. But rising up against the government to hold on to the notion that right. black lives should only matter as your property, mm -hmm. that makes you a hero for all eternity, statues, military bases, flags. That's right. That's right. And, and then, and, okay, so then we get into, of course, and this is one of those things, that, of course, every time I hear this discussion, this, 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 this one of them peeves that completely get under my skin so to my to my um white brothers and sisters all right to 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 my vanilla people take it from this chocolate man here i need for my white brothers and sisters to please stop throwing out but again it's not again it's not your fault it is part of your myth it's part of the narrative but once you hear it you can just make a decision whether you're going to accept this truth or not. That's right. So go That's ahead. Right. Yeah, but I need for them to stop every time the conversations come up about American pride and patriotism and history. I need for y'all to stop talking about wars and flag and all that stuff. And let's just start with the wars, first of all. Okay, mm -hmm. let's, let, let me just start there. Uh, you'd have never won a single war if it weren't for my people. 
<laughs> every war that you have ever fought from the Revolutionary War on down, Lord. my people helped you. My people Lord. served. My people lost their lives. My people right. came home broken, busted, and disgusted. We went out and we fought for your freedom and came back and were still your slaves. Still so your slaves. Please, 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 please. I've watched every day of my 45 years on this planet. I've watched my greatest hero, my father, walk around here on one leg for fighting for you. Come on, Price. So I need for you to please stop with that narrative. Yeah. I need for you to understand that when you think, oh, yeah, but this, you're disrespecting the this. You, you, you're telling us we're disrespecting something that you, have, you don't understand that we were a part of it. That's right. You don't understand that you, you can't tell us that we're disrespecting something that belongs to you. We're not disrespecting right. anything. We're standing up for something that we fought for that we weren't entitled to, even though we were the ones that did the fighting for it in the first place. Even though we were the ones building it, tilling it, and everything else. Listen. Didn't own none of it. While y'all mm. uh, got to Boy. have your bone spurs, while you got to have your rich relatives pull you out of battle, guess what? Uncle Sam, Uncle Tom, Uncle whoever he was, went up on black college campuses, ripped people off of them, and sent them around the world to go fight for y'all so y'all could still stay rich. And on the front you. line. On, on the, the front, front line. line. We were your living battle. Now they tell us thank you. We were your That's battle. Right. Line. That's right. We were the first ones in battle. That's right. Tell us thank you. Tell us thank you for being your human shields. That's right. And, and so every time Ooh. I hear that argument, that is the most You insane. just messed up the 4th of July for a whole lot of people. <laughs> it, across the pond, you know, across the pond in the UK, we call it the independent. Over there, they call it the War of Rebellion. And they were right. And you know what? Here's the thing. Now, 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 now y'all, if you want me, then I wasn't going to go there. You want me to mess with you. I'll mess with you. See, because the truth of the matter is, if we could have, we should have fought for the British, because at least every black person that fought for the British, you got your freedom. Wow. See, they don't tell us enough. One of the things they don't tell you, they don't teach in American history, is that one of the big issues really was the fact they were mad because slavery was outlawed in England almost 100 years before America. That's one of the problems. That slavery was already being outlawed. And so that's part of what the issue was. One of the reasons that they wanted that be their own countries is because they wanted to be rich, because they wanted all this free labor. Shut now, up. you see, so they don't, they don't teach you that, hey, they teach you this, this fake picture. Well, we came here to be free. We want a religious freedom, and we want this and that and other. No, you came here to get rich yes. using my people's blood and stealing the natives' property. That's right. You stole my people's property out of Africa. You stole my people's property out of the West Indies. You stole the natives' property of the Americas. You used our to make you rich. You wanted to be free, to be rich. And then you want to provide them. Check this out. They wanted to get rich, and they had the nerve to complain about paying taxes. Don't that sound like y'all's president? <laughs> See, some stuff don't ever change. The rich still don't have to pay the bill. They, Boston Tea Party, they mad. Because, wait a minute, we came over here to get rich, and now we still got to pay taxes, too? Yeah. Why we got to pay taxes? Yeah. Wow. You see, the, and, but see, guess what? And that way of thinking has trickled mm. down. It is still prevalent. It still exists. In it is. And it you is know, that's, that's, a, that's a really important thing to think about, like the, that it has trickled down. So just like we have generational trauma in our DNA, right. we have generational resilience yes, in absolutely. our DNA. Because the yes. fact that Black people are still walking around here with even half of our right mind yes. is absolutely. proof yes. that we are a magical people, right, absolutely. first of all. And absolutely. so... This idea, so just like that comes down, mm -hmm. all of the privilege, the entitlement, the spoiled rottenness. Yeah. <laughs> there, there you go. There you, you go. know, which you then causes yeah. both arrogance and fragility all in the same yeah. bottle. Right. It's yeah. like, that's, so no, you can say, well, like, I didn't do it. No, but you still 
perpetrate those same values in the way that you live your life and the fact that you even arguing with me right now when I say that Black Lives Matter. The fact that you go, but all lives matter, we're not talking about all lives right now. Exactly. We're not talking about all lives. If it was about all lives, we wouldn't be having this conversation. If it was about all lives, my son last year wouldn't have been surrounded by three white officers who were not labeled as officers and unmarked cars jumped out of their cars with guns drawn four deep guns in his face. If all lives mattered, we wouldn't be having these conversations. Exactly. 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 But again, you know, when you are, the more you believe a lot, I mean, like the problem is this nation Mm. is indoctrinated in lies. And it's going to have to, okay, so watch this. So, okay, now, real quick, real, real, real fast, all right, real fast, not going deep, not going to religion, not going to that, but let's just talk about a principle, and let's just talk about putting things in a historical context for a second. Okay, cool, all right, bam. So, we want to we wanna look at that, okay, so, you got these people, they're in slavery, they're slaves, 400 years, 400 years of slavery, 400 years of slavery, and, you know, they, they Finally, you get to the place of enough is enough is enough is enough is enough. Enough is enough. Okay, enough. Okay? The, the oppressor, like, I ain't hearing it. I ain't hearing it. Enough, enough, enough. I ain't hearing it. I ain't hearing it. So finally, all of a sudden, what happens? Plagues come. Now, all mm. of a sudden, the professor, the, the oppressor now has got to pay attention because he's now forced to deal with stuff because now there's plagues going on and now people dying. You see, people dying now. So all of a sudden, it takes plagues now to come, all of a sudden, to get the oppressor to wake up and say, maybe there is something wrong here, okay? 400 years of it, right? Okay, right. So plague come, then the oppressor want to wake up a little bit, okay? But watch this. The oppressor wakes up, right? But then, after the oppressor wakes up, you know, he start getting comfortable again. So finally, you know, the slaves now say, fine, we finally out here, we're going to we change it. We take freedom, 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 let's go, let's go, let's march. Press and chase him. Press and say, I still, I still, we got still, bam, 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 bam. Okay, bam. Yeah. 1619, official legal start of slavery in this country. Legal start of slavery. Slavery going for them. But anyway, 1619, Jamestown, Virginia. Okay, legal start of slavery in this country. Right? 400 years later, 400 years of oppression. 400 years of slavery, 400 years of Jim Crow, chattel slavery, everything, 400 Mass years. Mass incarceration. Back, Matt, what? Exactly 400 years later? Plague time. Here come a plague. 2019, COVID. Now, bam, what's happening? The whole world got to pay attention now. Yes. The whole world got to pay attention now. I mean, during our lifetime, it's, We've lost count of how many of our brothers and sisters have been killed. Yeah. And, and, and not, not just the murders, but the beatings, the, li- the uh, everything. We've That's lost right. count of it. So why is this so different this time? Yeah, because yeah. this is the first time. This was the next that, question I was going to ask you, what you were saying about why, why yeah. has George Floyd's murder yeah. hit us in ways? <laughs> That it. people in Korea are in the streets marching yes. saying Black Lives Matter. Yes. Like, what is yes. happening right now? Yes, New okay. Zealand, Czechoslovakia, Poland, Italy, right. like, you name it, all over the place. The whole world now, because now after 400 years of oppression, okay, after 400 years, finally mm-hmm. another plague comes that commands the attention of the whole world. See, right. here's the difference. And, and, and we're all guilty of this because part of it, it's not intentional. It's not intentional. We're proud black people. We are, but we also, without realizing, let me, let me, just, let me say this. I, one of the things I've been thinking about over these last few months is that I realized that part of it was probably our own coping mechanism. That's right. Because you're dealing with so much pain and so That's much right. trauma. You have to find ways to be able to cope so that you can continue to exist and to function and to keep being that magical people that won't give up. That's right. So what's different about this time? This time, the whole world is full. See, before, 
somebody's murdered. We're so used to it. One of the things that we're just so used to it that we become almost numb. Like we're and used to it. Right. And that's why we say why don't be numb. numb. Right. And that's don't exactly numb. why we say don't be numb. No. But now what's happened this time? Guess what? See, in the past, something happens. We mad. We mad for a week. We march. We cry. We protest. But then, of course, we're right back at work because we have to be. We go right back to work. We go right back to school. We go right back to our restaurants. We go right back to the mall. We go right back to the club to dance our problems away. We go back to the churches to shout our problems away. We go right back to business as usual. Right. The and this difference time this couldn't. time is that the whole world is right. forced to pay attention. You know, folks keep on saying, everybody want everybody to wake up all the time. Stay woke. woke. Guess what? Everybody woke. Everybody woke. Everybody got to look now. There's right. no escaping it. So stuff that we could... Right. And that stuff that, watch this. So even I, my, 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 my white brothers said stuff that could be tuned out even by people in parts of the country that they don't have many black people. You know the way, but they don't, they couldn't tune it out. They couldn't tune it out. Right. Not Before, this time because the world was is closed. Exactly. So the only thing you can do, you can't go eat no some food, you can't no go choice. dance, you can't no. go back to work, you got to stay right. in your house. That's right. And you That's online right. anyway because all your work now is virtual. Right. That's right. And so everything, if it right, so now a black man got killed, you got to yeah. fix it. And also, it, it, with this plague hitting, mm -hmm. so people would ask me, interviewers would say, well, are you surprised that, that murder is still happening while uh, COVID-19, while, while, we're, while we're in a worldwide pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you what irritates me about that question is that violence mm -hmm. and murder has been a worldwide pandemic, but it's exactly. mostly happening to black and brown people. So it's right. not something that people consider a pandemic, but Absolutely. it is. Absolutely. Um, um, Absolutely. Indigenous women turn up missing all the freaking time and nobody right. knows what's happening to them. You know, right. like, it's just, Absolutely. it's crazy. And yeah. so I will say to people like, okay, that question is because we don't understand the root causes of violence. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Cause when you understand the root causes of violence, then you get that mm. this is an epidemic we are already in. So when a pandemic, if, if we're already living under violent systems of oppression, Yes. And then a pandemic hits. It's easy to say, well, put your mask on. What about if you can't afford a mask? Well, rip right. up a t-shirt to cover your face. Rip that's up a shirt. Do you know how I don't have clothes to be ripping up to put around my face? What are you talking about? Stay in the house. I've been living couch to couch. I, whose house I'm gonna stay in? Right. We got phone calls when the when when outside first got closed. Mm -hmm. There's this woman, as um, um, Monique, who fights really hard for missing children okay. um, and runaway children and things like that. And so she called me to say that there were so many children, youth, now suicidal because of the conflicts they were having with their guardians and parents oh, because... Yes. They, everybody was now forced to be in the house together and parents were kicking their kids out. Yeah. So yeah. all of the precautions and, mm -hmm. and it's just real easy to argue with people about how they should and shouldn't be navigating the precautions. But when mm -hmm. you understand that people are already living under violent systems of oppression, right. a plague only emphasizes all of those injustices that already that's exist in society. And that's another thing that people had to notice now. Like right. now you had to know, when you ride up and down North Avenue, you got to ask yourself, why are all of these people still outside? Right. Well, when there's a the, pandemic, what is happening? Why are these people still outside? Well, you know, and I'll tell you, one of the, one of the, Converse points to that, or one of the one of the flip sides of that, it would would be this. One of the reasons that um, many of um, our white brothers and sisters um, had to really reckon with the assassination of uh, Brother Floyd is because they had to say, "Now wait a minute, we're in the middle of a national crisis." Right. And you still got time, Mr. Copper, in the middle of a crisis to murder a black to person? murder somebody, right? You had time to keep your to keep to keep your keep keep his neck pinned for over eight minutes. You had that. Yeah. So when you ask about murder, it's happened. Hello, that you that, that that's a, that I say you know that is a good question. 
why do why do the cops have time to murder during a pandemic? During a pandemic, that would be my that's, that's my question. response. It's a good question. Because I can, I, I understand why, why, and I'm not justifying, but I'm saying we can come to a place of understanding, like that's right. like what is happening. And, and that's exactly what Dr. I, King said. If you do to any group of people what has been done to Black people in America, you will get the same results. You will get absolutely. crime. You will get violence. You will get, and we live in a country that teaches that violence is power. Right, that what the group? way to get power is to be violent, and when then you lose, we shoot. Hey, that's what your boy said. Yeah. Boy Powell said, "When you loot, we shoot." So, okay, well, right. real quick, when, when you loot, we shoot. So, does that mean that the mm. the the the, uh, the Guggenheim and all the great art museums in our country are we about to start giving back all of the art the the billions of dollars worth of art that we have stolen Come from on. Africa and stolen from other nations. Are, 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 are mm. Can we return all that? Can we return all that? Are we returning all of our looted goods, America? Are we returning the land back to Native Americans? Mm. Am I getting my 40 acres and a mule? You, can we get back all that's been looted? Let, 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 come that's on, the let's truth. Because the president said, when you loot, we shoot. Right. So, I mean, so if looting is wrong, then reparations should not be a debate. It shouldn't be a debate at all. At all. Mm -hmm. At all. It should not be a debate at all. And crazy, like, even before, like I was, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not an economist at all. I, I wish I was sometimes. You know, I mean, I have more money, but I'm not an economist. But I used to think that, well, maybe you know, America really at this point, you know, they they, they probably can't afford. Now, how did you find out that they absolutely can afford it? Once again, see, the lights came on. The magnifying glass came on. The world, America, the world sees you. We've always seen you, see. But now the world sees you. The world is looking. You know why? Because COVID-19 turned on the lights. Because when America can write a blank check, to 200 million white folk. Yeah. They could have gave reparations to 15 million black folk. That is the facts. I that mean, is real facts. quick, inside of, inside of two, three weeks, something that we have argued for for 100 years. Yeah. Y'all were able to pull it together inside of two weeks. Yeah. Because white folk needed it. Because it was impacting white people. That's right. When, it, when whatever is going on with black people, they don't got it. But let, let white people start dying? Oh, we can figure some stuff out. It's a problem. <laughs> we can figure it's some problem. stuff out. You better believe it. When white, especially watch it. Let white children start dying in school. Every school closed. I mean, they talking about opening school. Let all the white kids start dying. Thanks. You know, because again, what? we're not valued. Can we're I not valued, and there is not equity. And there again is the problem, the lack of equity. Yeah. It cannot just be that we matter. It has to be that you are seeing us as equal. Yeah. And, and, and again, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's crazy. Like just the, the double standard, um, which we have known exists, it has just come to a head now and we've been forced to reckon with. And I, I do want to say this, I am happy I am really honored and touched, and I, 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 I've met a lot of new, I've made a, a lot of new, wonderful um, white associates through this. Um, some of them who just been hitting me up, because just some of the things that I've been posting, and just open, starting to die, and I just, even just having the dialogue. And I like the honesty. You know, I, there was one lady that um, I was communicating with, and she she admitted she said you know i i grew up in you know middle class middle area pretty much all she said and you know my family we weren't taught this and we weren't taught that and i i, I really didn't know that racism was and she said, she said i'm not stupid i know that racism is real she said i, I know that racism is it she said right. i did not know that racism was still as prevalent she said i really did not know you know what i'm saying and and, and, and i get and i respect her honesty just yeah. like they really don't know Santa ain't real. <laughs> I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Cheryl's question because her hand is up in a second. But first, I just want to say this out loud for anybody who listens to this and misunderstands 
this is not this conversation is not like in competition with the Black Lives Matter movement oh, gosh, no. or stop not saying yet. Black Lives Matter altogether. This <laughs> is not that's not the conversation we're having. This right. is a conversation, right. and, and mostly we're talking about white people. Exactly. Right. There's a realization we're saying white people need to come to because when you understand that you've been conditioned to believe mythology about yeah. your whiteness and, and other people's whiteness, mm -hmm. and you understand that white people have always gotten to decide how black lives matter, mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. black lives have, mm -hmm. however you wanted them to, matter to white people. Right. If you are going to be a true ally, yes. Yes. yes, you're going to go. You're going to say they matter and they are as valuable and is and equal to mine. And so, what exactly. does equity look like? Right, right, right. right. Because if, if we stop at matter in a space where mythology still runs rampant and the myth of white supremacy is the most market successful marketing campaign in mm -hmm. history. Yeah. Then white people can stop. This is why they treat Black Lives Matter like a tit for tat opportunity. Yeah. Blue Lives Matter and All yeah. Lives Matter. And this is not a tit for tat opportunity. Right, right. And so clearly, y'all don't understand this right. is not just about we matter the way your dogs matter and your lawns matter and the right. way life, all life matters and race is a human construct and all of this kind of stuff and i'm as spiritual as they come because mm -hmm. god ordained me so and right. i'm going to tell you that my blackness matters That's right. it's not just you can't just oh is the human race me out uh, that is a cop out so you don't have to do the work of healing racial injustice Absolutely. The injustices that your forefathers created, that the generation right above you kept building, and that mm -hmm. you now benefit from if you think you're not participating in. Mm -hmm. And so when you put all of that in context, if you are a white ally and you want to really be about your work of healing mm -hmm. racial injustice, you have to go deep and say, oh, Black lives are equal to white lives yeah, yeah. and are as valuable as as white lives because mm -hmm. that will change the way you engage with your life right and with what you think is right or wrong and, mm -hmm. and whether or not you swallow the myths and the lies and you will notice them and call them out more often when mm -hmm. it's difficult for you to do so mm -hmm. exactly. exactly cheryl what did you want to say had to unmute myself so actually <laughs> actually two points so somebody made a very simple analogy um when they were talking about all lives matter and mm -hmm. the analogy that somebody made was when a fireman goes into a neighborhood yeah and a, and a house is on fire mm -hmm. every house in that neighborhood matters but right. he's gonna put the fire out of the house that's burning absolutely Ooh. And Absolutely. so my house isn't any less valuable than your house, but my, right now my house is burning and that right. fire needs to be put out. Oh, that's Absolutely. really good. That's and beautiful. so that's beautiful. when somebody told me that, I was like, bingo, that's exactly it. You know, this is that's a fire it. that has been going on for 400 years. It has yes. been raging yes. for 400 years. Yes. And now it's time to put that fire out. Absolutely. It's time Absolutely. to put it out. Um, mm -hmm. And then the second point I was going to make, um, Mr. Price, I have to remember not to call you that other word, <laughs> is um, that, that, that's, talking... my, that's my aunt, y'all. <laughs> I ain't going to tell y'all she um... used to change my diapers. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh, oh, Lord, please. But um, anyway, when you were talking about um, that things don't affect people until it affects the white community, you can just go back to the opioid um, pandemic that's been Absolutely. raging for years. So the last couple of years, because it has hit the white community and mm -hmm. white people are dying, all of a sudden it's a national travesty. And and mm -hmm. I'm not saying that it's not. I'm a I'm a medical professional, and I'm not saying that right. it's not an issue. But when it was killing our brothers and sisters, right, wasn't a problem. It's, it's criminal. It's it. It, it's, it's, it was it's, criminal. It's, it's just criminal. Exactly. It's you, exactly. Could, you could get 20 years for just selling an eight ball of crack. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. so, that, so, so that's just to um, yeah. um, validate your point about when it 
it, it, when it doesn't affect them, it's a it's a whole different matter. And now, you know, everybody can have get Narcan mm-hmm. because if you you live with a person that you know you can be able to save them if they um yeah. you know get an overdose yeah. and something free. Yeah. You can get it for free. Yeah. You don't need yeah. a prescription. You can get it for free. Yeah. Right. You know? Yeah. So um, you know, just the disparities. It's just it's just amazing. Yeah. I'm glad you said that. I say that to people all the time about the homicide epidemic, that mm-hmm. I want white people to realize it's an epidemic now and that their hands are not clean in it. Homicide in Baltimore City is not a black people problem. Mm -hmm. Right. And I don't Mm -hmm. want for when white people. Right. Because the violence is an epidemic. It shall spread. Right. Yes. Yes. It shall spread. Mm -hmm. And so when you start noticing now more white people getting killed and y'all want to come to the ceasefire movement and start talking about how must I be saved and what what can I do about this epidemic? I'm going to be mad. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you how you can get involved. But first, you're going to get a tongue lashing about how it's been an epidemic before it was impact before you before homicide detectives were showing up at your house it was already an epidemic mm-hmm. sure sure yep. thank I, I'm you hoping, i'm hoping thank you Cheryl. thank you auntie i'm i'm hoping that even with this i'm hoping that everyone i, I really want everyone it's it, it's um and not just not just my white brothers and my black. I want my black brothers and ammo. I need for everyone to really pay attention to uh, what forty five. I try not to say his name. I just I try my best not to feel like you know part of our African tradition. You know, as long as we speak someone's name, we keep them alive. Mm. So I try not to even say his name. And I ain't saying I'm killing him. I just don't want to keep his spirit. You don't alive. want his. You don't want his energy floating no. around. I got no. it. No, when I can't stand somebody, they name let me come on my mind. I don't talk about people I don't like. When people, if you say you talk about, I don't talk. If I talk about, if I, if I talk about that, I mean I like you. <laughs> I, I don't like. If I like you, I don't talk about you. Yeah. So you know, um, but I, I don't. I, I'm hoping that people wake up and really go deep and think about the history of what happened with Tulsa, Oklahoma, and the way the way that town was blown up, literally bombed. I, yeah. I, and, and think, I, I want everyone, every, and that's gonna be a lot of discussions going on over the next week as, um, you know, Commander Bone Spurs um, heads that way uh, for Juneteenth, his Juneteenth rally. And I want to, I want us to stop and look at the, you hear all people talk about people tearing up the community. That, I want people to see the stuff that was, done and ingrained and why it is significant how we move today yeah why it is, it is really significant how we move today um yeah. and, and i and I, I want my young um black brothers and sisters uh to really 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 i'm going to make sure that even with my students at morgan that i really next week leading up to juneteenth i do a lot of juneteenth things and i specifically have them to go back and once again revisit that so they can see first i want them to see again the brilliance and the black magic that was coming out of that town of black people who pulled together and pulled their resources and pulled their first and foremost they pulled their minds they yes. that, you know what I'm it, it's always been the, the, the mantra and the, and the same the United Negro Congress when their mind's a terrible thing to waste. And, 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 and that's the thing, the, 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 the power that, of that mind and coming together and built a tremendous town yeah. that completely threatened the core of racism in this country. Come this on. And because the, it showed the myth, it showed the myth of black inferiority to be untrue. Untrue. Listen, we, 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 first of and all, that's dangerous. Watch this. Here's the real deal. Okay, the real, the real deal. If you want to know, listen. So we we know, and I, I hear people with this argument all the time, and, they, and and you know, and I make light of it sometimes. But those of you, if you don't know me and don't understand where I'm coming from, go on uh, YouTube and pull up one of my play, pull up journey of a people and just watch, let your children your children need something to do for home while they off school. You know, I'm on a little final yeah. something. Let them watch that and talk about it. And I talk yeah. about. How, see, we know slavery's existed everywhere, but the slavery that was done here, it was even more insidious than biblical slavery. 
was. Because even in the Bible. The world had not seen anything like chattel slavery nothing before. Like nothing like mm -mm. it. Nothing like it. Because even in the Bible, our Jewish brothers and sisters, they, they still got to be Jews. They still got to have their God. They still to got this to day. Yeah, to, this to this day, day, they can trace back to where and who they, they come 5, from. Thousand years of history, like that's that, right. To right along. That's right. As we got to put some it. DNA in a package and mail it somewhere and hope we get something true oh. back. But see the, <laughs> but the, but again, the fear, the fear is that white folk were terrified of these black brains. That's right. We're going back to Black Lives Mattering. Listen, they were so terrified of these black brains, and that's one of the reasons that they deliberately stole our language and history, made sure we couldn't communicate, made sure that we could not work together, taught us to distrust one another, taught us not to be a cohesive unit, because they knew if we did what we do, we, the same people who invented paper in the first place and the world's first libraries, taught folk how to read and write while they were still crawling. Come on. Listen, they knew that if that happened, that we could not ever remain subservient. Right. And that we could not ever be considered less than. That's and we right. could not ever be considered non-equal. How can we be non-equal when we're the ones that taught y'all what paper is? You don't know how to read and write. We made paper for you. We gave you books. That's right. We gave you a library. We, we invented medicine. Mm. I'm saying we did the world's right. first heart surgery so they did not want us to know that to understand it to connect with it so what do i do i have to rob you of every piece of that rob you of all of it make it illegal for you to be reading one of the worst crimes it that is. a white person could do a mm. white person you won't get in trouble white folk teach a, teach, right. teach a negro how to, to read, read. Right. yep 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 because they were afraid of That's the right. intelligentsia that lied beneath yeah. and that coming out and being exposed. So we got to rob them of that. We got to convince them they're stupid, convince them they're dumb, take away and rob us And them. rob us in ways that's so horrific. Like, I, so it's one thing to separate parents from their children. It's a different thing to hang somebody from a tree and everybody stand around and cheer and eat food and celebrate. It's another thing to cut a baby out of a pregnant mom's belly. Yeah. It's a different thing to cut off a man's penis, yeah. decapitate somebody right in front of their loved ones. Like, this is beat people with yeah. anything yeah. you can yeah. think of. You don't just make something out of leather, and, then and, you put barbed wire on it too. Like. It. I right. mean, you just, it wasn't just like, let me make them think they are not as no. good as us. No. It's like no. literally, yeah. let's but, try to yeah. destroy them. But watch this now. But what you're saying to me, what you're saying to me, young, beautiful chocolate lady, is that you want me to try to come to terms with the fact that some of my ancestors were monsters from hell? Monsters, monsters. No. And then and then taught all the lies that made all of that stuff heroic to this very day. That's right. And made That's sure right. that you get to benefit from. It. That's right. That's right. And made sure that you get mad at me anytime I bring it up. Exactly. 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 Yeah. We don't have we do not have the right. So, somebody we, uh, we has are, a question. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this real quick. Watch this. We, it is an offense to, not all, but not all now, but it is an offense to some of our white brothers and sisters to mention the African Holocaust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Robin, you had your hand up. You can unmute yourself and say whatever you were gonna say. Good evening, everyone. I appreciate the conversation. Obviously, we all know it's must needed. Um, I have about three three or four different points, and I don't want to take up too much time, but the first thing is, and I, I wrote this on Tavon's page a couple of weeks ago, I think, because I was just compelled to do it, but I want, what I want to see now, because I, I love that you all are speaking very dynamically and using the actual terms and saying who these people are, black people, white people, what happens in media today, though, is that they use 
passive language, which I don't like. Passive language is not identifying the noun. So when they talk about the killing of George Floyd or the murder of George Floyd, they're not giving, they're not giving life to the murderer. And it's not about the murderer, but we're here because of the murderer and the murderer needs to be held accountable. And yes, we do need police reform, but it's about a judicial system reform because there have been police officers who have been charged, but what happens? They get off. So right. we're at the very first step of seeing how the judicial system is gonna play out because mm -hmm. ultimately that's why we are where we are. Mm -hmm. is the judicial system that has held us in these places, Black people in these places, mm -hmm. to dehumanize us because not only do we not get the rights, but we don't even get to defend our rights. And when wrongs are being put on us, we can't even fight it because the system mm -hmm. says this person is right. Right. Who did the wrong yeah. to you. So yeah. I'm all for police reform. I'm 100% for it because we absolutely need it. However, it's the judicial system that needs an overhaul. And absolutely. it's too many Black faces who mm -hmm. are in positions of power who choose white over right. Mm. And that's the issue that I have with our people because we're so conditioned to this system that we can't even look out for ourselves. And that's how deep it is. That we can't even see ourselves in these people who are dying in the streets. Hmm. So that that just rips me to the core because I wonder, like, how is it that you have this platform and you do nothing about it? How hmm. do you have these positions and do nothing about it? So that's one issue that I'm having. Um, the other issue. Can I can I just can I say something to that last point real quick? Um, yeah. So there's this book called Pedagogy of the Oppressed, mm -hmm. and yeah. it teaches it answers the very question you just asked mm -hmm. about why is it how can black people not recognize themselves and the black people that are getting killed, and how can they have platforms and power and not be using it toward racial justice? And it is because in order to successfully oppress a people. What you have to do is make sure that they are able to oppress themselves and mimic the behavior of the oppressor so that the oppressor doesn't have to continue doing too much work to oppress them. So you will see that happen in any marginalized group. You will see women, like rape culture, one of the problems with rape culture is when a woman is raped, it's often women saying, well, what was she wearing and what was she doing out that late? And you know what I mean? Because, right. so that's what happens with oppression is that you have to, in order to successfully oppress somebody, you have to teach them the behaviors of the oppressor and get them to believe that those behaviors are the right, respectable way to go and be. Mm -hmm. And so in the problem in America and with blackness and whiteness all over the world is that the oppressor didn't just realize, okay, they're oppressed. We can just let them do oppressive behaviors to each other now and just take their hands off of us. No, they continue system and day and year and incident after, right? Every, just over and over to continue to oppress us. And mm -hmm. so we, I, I ask us to lead with compassion when we see other black and brown people who are not understanding the racial injustices that they are even living in, mm -hmm. I ask us to think about what does, if you really understand that is what oppression is supposed to do to them, Right. Yeah. then it might, then we don't get as angry with one another. We realize we need to help heal one another instead. Absolutely. And can I, can I say something really quick to that point too? And I, I wasn't trying to go off into this tonight and I just, and, I, and we, there's so much that we could, be, we could go into these discussions. But one thing I do want to just say very quickly to what you brought up, because I, you're right, there, 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 there is issues with the judicial system. I yeah. need for us to also pay attention to the fact that it is very deliberate. It is very deliberate that, um, that uh, they have taken, that, that social studies 
and uh, government has been taken out of public schools. Even in the state of Maryland, there's no longer a, 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 an assessment exam for government. You know, wow. Some of you all remember when you took the HSA, the high school assessment exam, you had your science, your math, you, there's no one, they don't, government is no longer stressed. Wow. The oppressor wow. does not want us to understand the way the government works. Okay, let's be clear on that. That's right. The oppressor does not want us to understand the way the government works. So if I can just tell a bunch of people anything they want to hear, one, you think that one, either your vote doesn't matter, or if you just vote for this person, it means this. What we need to understand, the reason that some of these elections, especially federal elections, the presidential election is so important, not just because of the stupid stuff that 45 does and his clownery and tomfoolery. It's important because who's in that White House is appointing federal judges. Federal judges, you made a very good point, Robin. It's those judges that determine what happens, what the, when we look and see, like, again, you look to see how things are happening, are, are police being held accountable, is this group being held accountable, are, people, are people's right to vote being suppressed? Federal judge, it is so critical. And, I, and I'm telling you, one of the things, folks don't want us to understand how much the vote matters. It matters, forget whether you like the person, whatever. it matters because you want to think about who is going to be sitting on those benches determining whether or not a black person is going to jail for 20 years for some weed or not. That's right. You want to really be thinking about what is happening with the criminal justice and what is happening just legally, just across the board. It is those judges, and many of those, again, all boy, in four years, you gotta, you, we gotta remember, he might only be in there for four years, but many of those judges that he's appointed, especially with the Supreme Court, that's a lifetime. They in there so they, they die, right, that's right. Generations. That's you right, they in there till they die. Yeah. It's crucial, y'all, it's crucial. Yeah. If we want a better world, if we want a better world for the next generation, if we want to improve things here, and if, we've gotta make sure that we get the right folk on the benches. Right. That is so Robin, what else were you gonna say? Oh, I love this. I absolutely love this because I think we don't talk enough about uh we don't, we just, black, um, it's, oh, I'm so glad you brought up social studies because I just looked at table and I said, social studies and history are two different courses, completely different courses. When you're in elementary school, they kind of run the same, but as you get uh, maturated in other, you know, in, in, in higher education, mm -hmm. they're two different lines of uh, education. But um, anyway, um, the other point that I was gonna make is that um, a couple of years ago, we went to Japan. It was myself and my daughter and, and Tavon. We all went and we decided to go to a museum, like a historical museum. And what was so profound about Japan is that obviously everyone. Your, um, your audio went out. You said obviously everyone. We lost you, Robin. Robin, did you go back to Japan on us? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, we can't hear her. Well, Robin, if you come Robin, back on, type your comment back. or something in the comments. Yeah, she, she got disconnected totally now. Yeah. Okay. Um, anybody else have any questions, any other questions for us or comments that you have? Um, also, anybody on face? People are saying things on Facebook. One person I had to block because you know trolls love to find stuff. We don't even bring them up. Yeah. We don't even bring them up. They don't. We don't give them energy. Um. Somebody said they used to live in Hagerstown. They moved from Philadelphia. Yeah, and they got out as soon as possible when they got to. Um, mm. So people were doing just a lot of amen and stuff you were saying. Come on, Morgan. Come through, preacher. You know, <laughs> and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. 
Um, so I just want to, um, we are at a 39 now. Um, and I don't think we set an end time, uh, but I just, I don't, I also don't want to keep people too long. And um, I think you said everything that I wanted you to say out loud that we talked about in our conversation. Um, and I think it is, uh, and we, when I talk with the squad about whether or not to host this conversation on the ceasefire page, we talked about how all of this is at the root of both police and community violence. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right, because it is about when you take the myth of white supremacy and you flip it, you find the myth of black inferiority. Exactly. And exactly. that also conditions society, you know, yeah. even yeah. for black people, right? So if you see, one of my favorite analogies is if you see five white men in suits walking down the street, you don't cross over to the other side, you don't grip your purse. Your heart doesn't feel nervous. Your chest doesn't get tight. But let, right. let five black boys in white t-shirts and sagging jeans walk past you yeah. on the street. Even if you don't cross over, even if you're not so obvious, right? right? But you if just notice mm -hmm. something yeah. in your chest yeah. gets a little bit tight or you start wondering, why won't they pull their pants up? What, they, what are they doing? Like yeah. there's a judgment and a mistrust and yeah. a fear that comes, that does not come when white men in suits walk past. And, right. the, and the reason is because, again, white men have the best marketing campaign, sure. right? Because in real life, white men in suits kill, pe kill more people around the globe every day Absolutely. than black boys will ever be able to kill. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. But that's not the narrative. Not, not at all. No, and no. so when you when you understand that if that is if you understand brain science and how if you continue to show imagery of someone or something is dangerous it's not just that our minds absorb it the human brain in evolution holds on to the picture of what it thinks is dangerous and so right now Human beings, just seeing a picture of a snake or a spider has a different impact on you than seeing a picture of a hat or a shoe. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. But because even if you've never encountered a snake or a spider, right. your humanity has encountered those things as being dangerous. And so now in our evolution, yeah. We automatically feel that our sense of well being is threatened just seeing pictures of those things. So then, when you think about constant images of black people as robbers and rapists and just being dangerous and being inferior in general and seeing black bodies being killed over and over again, it just dehumanizes. Right. What you think blackness is, whether you want it to do that or not, you have to be so conscious to be fighting right. against that conditioning because it's something that's literally happening in the evolution of our brains that we yeah. automatically see black people and yeah. somehow feel a little bit less safe. Yeah. And so imagine what that does to the people ourselves, right? Yeah. Yes, it causes yeah. violence. Yes, yeah. it causes pain. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, it's trauma. But see, I'm gonna, you, right. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell you something else that, 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 that um, it also goes to show that um, it, it, it's also conditioning of our nation. That's what right. I mean by that is, yeah, you're gonna find racism and injustice and cruelty and you're gonna find it everywhere. But when you are a part of a society that is really built on that, the perception is different. And this is one of the ways it was really crystallized yes. to me. I'm going to say this very quickly because I will never get over this experience. In 2013, I took a group of students um, on a tour and we visited several other countries. And we were in a little village. Um, now, mind you, I'm not saying that there's not racism in this place. I'm not saying that. But what I'm telling you is that there's different, in other words, there's a difference and people having this and a, and a nation that stems from it's, it's built, like, on, it, right. built on it. Mm -hmm. We were in a a little village, okay, in 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 Europe, and we were about to have lunch. Now, mind you, I want to make this very clear. 
It was 50 of us chocolate people and a sea of my vanilla brothers and sisters from their country. <laughs> All right? Now, I will never forget this, cuz. I'll never forget that it has such a bearing on me that we had a little time for just lunch break with us. Just, just, just sitting around, just go have lunch. And it was, I mean, a nice, quaint, one quaint little picturesque village, like something you would see on, on a little television show. Like it's not even real, but it was real. A little band marching through the street and everything, all this kind of stuff. Yeah, it was a Truman it. show, okay. I, it was crazy. It was beautiful. And I, this is the thing that blew me. So everyone's sitting around eating. My 50 beautiful black chocolate children from Baltimore in the sea of people from another country had never seen them know who they were. Okay, so I, I, I'm just observing. I'm sitting chilling. I'm having my little sandwich and whatnot. So we're just looking at kids all over the place. And a group of kids, they came, maybe five or six of their students came around me. And they sat, you know, around me, so forth and so on. And I just wanted to hear their thoughts. These are high school kids from Baltimore. And they started whispering, they were like, this is so weird. And I, I, I just wanted to hear them. Let, let them, let, let them talk. Like, what is it, what's weird about it? what's happening? How are they perceiving what's going on? And, and then somebody else said, yeah, I know, it really is weird, like, it's weird. And I wanted to know, like, what, what, what was weird, like, what were their, you know, and they were like, and I was like, you know, I just listened. And one of the boys said, ain't nobody staring at us. And wow. I'm like, yeah, and I kind of noticed that, but I could notice that being a little bit older, I want to hear what they said. He said, ain't nobody staring at us. And then they were like, and the girl was like, I know, like, we're like sitting out here, like, we the only ones, and they're not even looking at like they just like everybody's chilling. And then this part really, this was the freaky part. Now, for us, now you ain't doing this, but this was out. There was a family, okay. There was a you know, it was an open area thing, a little restaurant right here. There was a family that you could tell this family was quite wealthy, quite wealthy. It was an older gentleman, his wife, they had two gigantic, very expensive purebred dogs that you see in the dog shows that cost $10 million each. Mm -hmm. The wife had on diamonds from here to, you know, Mississippi, and they were very wealthy people. So, well, I mean, you very, you could tell, very, you know, cat, you know, you know, fine. And one of my girls, one of the girls, who, she walked by the table, right? And she said, oh, that looks so good. The man stops and goes, Oh, yes, it's delicious. You must try some. Here, picks up his plate. Now, we don't do this. Now, you're we ain't doing what? it. What? But this vanilla brother from the other side picks up his plate, right? And says, you must try it. This another fork. And the girl, of course, you know, when I go, girl, look at her like, I don't know you. And the wife said to him, the wife goes, darling, darling, they're American. They don't do that. They don't do it. He goes, he doesn't mean any harm. There. And the wife goes, buy, buy her a new one. Tell her, wait, just, can you bring this young lady what my husband's having? Wow. Got her, people we did not know. Just a regular conversation. Regular like, conversation. They should have some. And, like, and, no, and when no. we got back to the bus, this was the conversation my, my students were having. They said, one of the guys looked so sad. He looked so sad. They were like, I don't want to go home. I was like, why don't you go home? Don't you miss your family? They said, yeah, but we want our families to come here with us. And the one guy uh, said, he said, man, I can't walk through security mall without them watching me, looking to see what I'm stealing. He thanks. said, these people in this country don't even know me. And I got to stick out like a sore thumb because I'm black and they all white. And they treating me cool. And they up here buying us food and but nothing. And mind you, we weren't the, watch this, we were not the entertainment. They didn't even right, know right, we right. none of that. We right. were actually, you see what I'm saying? So it wasn't like they knew who we yeah. were. We were regular people visit. And so it just was shocking. Again, it was also encouraging to see that everybody ain't crazy. Everybody right. ain't. And we can have a better world when we start to make these. We can. Our nation, we have the tough work to do yeah. because unfortunately, or, or for whatever, we were built on a fake narrative and false premise. And we right. got to just come to terms with it, tell the truth about it, Pick it up and let's start doing that. That's exactly right. Yeah. Me and my kids will walk into a, an IHOP in mm -hmm. Carroll County or somewhere, and it's so white in there. 
Like we walk in and it gets quiet and everybody turns around and look and we we were like, never mind. And we just bust out laughing and turn around and walk right back out. Like, <laughs> it's just, you know, yeah, I can't imagine being black and nobody is looking. It was crazy. When it's a bunch of it white was people. Crazy. That's, that, but that is the difference between when a place is is like just it's ingrained. It's, it's it is it is as American as apple pie. There you go. It is. There it is. It, the myth is as American as apple pie. Absolutely. Yeah. So it is um eight forty nine now. Well, listen, I, it doesn't start, look I, like I anybody. Got, I got. I gotta take a second. Okay. I gotta take a second. I want to really do. I, I want to first take a moment, and I want to thank my dear. Wonderful, beautiful cousin Erica Bridgewater. For I, I really want to first and foremost, I want to thank her and commend her. We do this all the time. She knows one thing: we're very fortunate, and our family we have no lack of love. We're, that's one thing that's just ingrained in us. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And so she knows how much she is loved and appreciated. But I just want to say publicly again: I want to thank her for the work. I want to thank her for, you know, being um, true to her assignment. You know what I'm saying? I want to, you know, some things are callings. You know, what she does, this is her calling. My students will always count me on being a teacher. I wasn't a teacher. I was called to teach. There's a difference. Yeah. And she fulfills her calling. And I, and I want to thank her for that. And I also want to thank her for um, her inviting me on here tonight that to, for, for, our, for some of our family kitchen table talk. You know, yeah. and, and I want to thank you guys for sharing and participating and, and being a part of our larger for the family of humanity. This is what we yeah. need more of. And that's one of the other things that has come out of COVID that we've had to slow down and learn how to start talking and listening and hearing and communicating again and better. Yeah. And so yeah. this has been a wonderful experience for me and um, I, I appreciate it. And um, you know, I just wanted to say thank y'all. And I wanted to say also to my white brothers, my black brothers, all of y'all, guess what? You're going to be okay. Dealing with the fact that Santa ain't real, you're going to make it. It, it, it. Dealing with the accepting that some myths, uh, some truths, some things, it, you, will, you will survive it. Truth is power. A book says, buy the truth and sell it not. You know what I'm saying? And people say, well, people always take the old Bible scripture and they will misquote it and say, um, the truth will set you free. No, it actually says, know the truth, for the truth that you know will make you free. Yes. And so you have to know the truth. But you will, we will never be free. We will never really be free. And I'm not talking about black people, I'm talking about our nation people, because guess what? As long as I'm in bondage, America's in bondage. Come on. As long as I'm oppressed, this nation is oppressed. Come on. As long as part of us are marginalized, we are a marginalized country. So we can run around talking about we the greatest, the best, the greatest, the best. We will never be all. People say we'll be great again. Well, when were we great? Because we're not going to be fully great until we are free. And we're not <laughs> when was the great part? I'm wait, wait, wait. See, some of us are waiting for the way. Some of us are frustrated because we see the potential of this country. Yeah. We're still a country that, you know, it's like a teacher. You know, that's one thing the teacher always tell you. They have the parents, there's a your child has such great potential. They're just yeah. not living up to that's one of the most famous teachers. They have such They're not potential. living up to their potential. Yeah. And yeah. America. We have more potential than most just because of the blessings that we have and for some of the ways that we lucked out and stole and robbed and you know, some of the best. How about it? But we, we are living the benefits of a lot of, but guess what? We're not living up to the potential. To the potential, yeah. That we have. Yeah. And, we, and we've got to. And it's only going to start with truth. Yeah. It's yeah. only going to start with truth. Um, Robin asked if we could uh, get a bunch of white folks to speak as well, like more white roundtables. I'm going to say, um, so I'm going to try to figure out how to say this in a way that makes sense. Um, I, I, um, one, my, my children's father often calls me the king of white people. <laughs> So as a joke, right? As a joke. I'm saying that too, though. 
as a joke, right? Because I do, I am like on my Facebook page, I'm very honest with, with yeah. white people about whiteness. Yeah. Right. Um, and and often it's things that might shake people a little bit. And they often, and then white people often will thank me and say, thank you so much for saying this out loud, right? So I, I do, when I'm in the mood to, mm -hmm. I'll, if something will dawn on me that I'm like, I think I need to say something about mm -hmm. well-intentioned white women's behaviors and how they trigger the crap out of me or, mm -hmm. you know, like whatever. Right. And so, so sometimes I'll do that sometimes. Um, I think it was after the Baltimore uprising, these same kinds of conversations were happening all the time. And I was exhausted with white people coming and basically, you know, doing the what must I do to be saved routine with a bunch of black people. And like, as if we gotta t I, go talk among yourselves about y'all know what your family, the kind of stuff they say when I'm not around. Right. You know when something don't feel right in your soul about how somebody is being treated. I don't have to tell you right and wrong and when somebody has been treated like a person or a pet. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, right. if it was your child being treated that way, would you think it was still cool? If it was right. your husband being killed in the streets, would you still say he should have just obeyed the officer? Like, right. don't come and ask Black people to do that work. So I created a group on Facebook called White People Talking to White People About Healing Racism. Mm -hmm. And I told all the white people, y'all go in there and talk. I won't come in there. I don't care what y'all in there talking about. But y'all go in there and y'all talk. And I'm saying that to say, Robin, that I have to be, because I pay a lot of, I try to pay attention to my own emotional and mental well-being. Mm -hmm. I don't do a lot of caretaking around white people's work around racial justice. Mm -hmm because it's their work to do. Mm -hmm. They can listen to things like this and hear us tell the truth mm -hmm. and they can let it stir their souls and then mm -hmm. go talk among yourselves about what you need to do. So if some white people come to me and they say, hey, we're having a round table to, you know, a, a kitchen talk, just like you and your cousin did, and can you all let people know that this is happening? I will absolutely do that. Can I say that I will go now looking for white people to bring together to talk about stuff? I probably am not going to do that. Not in the middle of everything I'm doing to take care of black people. I'm probably not going to do that. And that's not your calling. Probably not. And that, that wouldn't be you being true to your calling. Yeah. And also, I'm going to say also a lot of things with, you know, a lot of things that happen, as specifically with, with my cousin, I know, because I'm not going to tell you how many years I've known her, but pretty much, you know, most of her whole life. But um, it, this, <laughs> this wasn't necessarily a planned thing. Some things are very just cathartic, and it was in the moment. It was like, this is what's speaking. This is where we are. This is what needs to happen. Yeah. This wasn't some planned thing. We were literally having family conversations. We were. Working on something for our grandmother. And I was just sharing some things with my cousin where I was, and we were just checking our own, you know, self healing where we checking on each other, and we yep. began to share. And it was so deep that we realized that we should share this with our larger community. So it wasn't like some contrived plan. Let's get together. Right. And we have didn't it. plan a discussion event. No, mm -mm, I don't. <laughs> we really I don't. Did. You know, so mm -hmm. you know when things mm -hmm. happen, if, if something presents, and it, it, you know. At, at, look, as they say in the church, as the spirit leads. Yeah. And, and I real? will say there are organizations in Baltimore that are white people dedicated to doing real work mm -hmm. around racial injustice. So SURGE, S-U-R-J, which stands for Standing Up for Racial Justice, they mm -hmm. do amazing work. Please go and um, connect with them on Facebook. Google them and go to their website to see all the kinds of things they're doing. Um, so like that, and, and Baltimore is a place where we got a lot of work to do and we do have um, some progressive white people, you know, <laughs> who, who, who understand some things and understand how not to tire black people with white people's work.
that they, that white people need to do. They understand where their work is, and so they organize themselves to do that work. And when they should, they uplift black voices and they bring in, you know, people to to where it makes sense. Um, but yeah, I'm, yeah. So anyway, so thank y'all so much for joining us for our conversation. It was a long conversation. We talked for two hours. Wow. Um, which actually is kind of short for us, though. It is. It is. It absolutely <laughs> it is. We, we can go. We can go. Um, it is. And um, so this, I'm going to upload this to the Baltimore Ceasefire's YouTube page. It's, it'll stay a live video on our Facebook page. Um, so people will be able to find it and, you know, use it how you feel makes sense. Um, feel free to comment on it, share it, send people to it, you know, all of that kind of good stuff. Thank you all so much for spending whatever part of your evening with us that you have. Thank you, Price. Thank you so very, very much. I only cussed one time. Did you see me? You did very well. I did good. You did very, very, very this well. This is my second interview today where I wasn't really cussing. I don't know what's happening. So you now I'm going to just go say a lot of words when I get off the Zoom. <laughs> and a slurpee yeah okay so i love you uh thank y'all for joining us y'all have a good night take care everyone stay strong and stay safe yes